Security is like a Tom and Jerry game. Sometimes Tom wins, sometimes Jerry wins, and sometimes nobody wins. Hey there everyone, Hitesh here, back again with another video, and in this video we're gonna talk about something very very important. Security issues in the NPM packages. Now at the very first time when I saw this all over the news, I was busy in making courses and some other personal work as well. I was pretty sure that a whole lot of people are going to talk about it, so if I'm busy, I'm sure somebody will talk about it. But this topic got like slided under the rug like anything. And I thought, this is not good. We should be talking more about these subjects so that more knowledge is spread around and we should have at least a discussion around it. The only way to make our application more secure is to talk about it, having more engagement around it and passing on the knowledge that we know about as a developer community. If we pass on these knowledge and we talk more about these incidents, we can definitely protect ourselves and at least have the knowledge being passed on. In the early days of my career, I have spent a good chunk of amount in security, all about it. Web application security majorly was my topic. I have spent good amount of time in that, writing research paper, helping in writing research paper, as well as doing actual audits and a whole bunch of other things. From writing custom exploits to writing articles for magazines like Pentest, yes, I have done all of that. And in case you are involved in security, you will probably find my name somewhere or the other. So proving the point that yes, I know a word or two about the security, not pretty much high end, but I know my fair share of stuff. Now, before I go ahead further and discuss about this particular incident, which everybody should know about, let me tell you one thing. Security is not something which is a goal to achieve. It's an internal pa part and a process of building the application. If you want and see security like this is something I have to achieve, no, this doesn't work like that. Security is a process and it's a part of development as well. And this should be taught right from upfront when the application is designed. But no matter what you do, it's a cat and mouse game and one day or the other, your application or whatever you are building is gonna get compromised. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Even companies big as Google, Microsoft, and Facebook, and all these big giants, they get compromised one day or the other. So it's, it's a really scary world. It's a situation like this. All we can do is try as best as possible to delay that situation. One of the many way of doing that is taking care of what's happening in the market and getting ourselves updated as this happens. And one good way of doing that is hitting that subscribe button so that you can keep updated about all the things which is latestly happening around. Now this attack, what I'm talking about, is not an ordinary SQL injection, some cross-site scripting. No, it is way more complicated than that. Really simple to understand, but very, very complicated to execute. And what's further might going to impress you, it's not about writing a custom exploit and using some of the open port vulnerabilities. No, it's not like that. It's directly writing code that take advantage of the system entirely. Just pushing the code like that. Okay, so let me bring you down to the how this attack was executed and how you can protect yourself a little bit towards these kinds of situation. In order to understand, you need to have a full understanding of how NPM works. Not too much, but at least a basic of it. In the earlier days, I have already rolled out a video about understanding the NPM and the Sember versioning in detail, but I'm pretty sure only a handful of you watched that video because it was educational content and this is a spicy content, so you'll be watching this one. So a brief tour of how Sember versioning works. In all the NPM packages, you see three parts of the application, whatever the package name is, and then x.y.z. In some of the mechanisms, we allow the Z version to be updated. In some, we allow Y version to get updated. And in usual cases, the X version is updated manually. And usually, this is how our application or the package.json file looks like. Sometimes we allow it automatically to just push all these uh, major updates, sometimes minor updates and patches. So this is how usually our NPM file looks like, or the package.json. And in the current scenario, we don't build application by writing entirety of our code by ourselves. It's no longer a norm. We don't do it anymore. There is always some or the other library that we use. It is. It might be a React library, Vue, Angular, some NPM packages, maybe for parsing some of the data, maybe some conversion, something, Axios or some library is there which is involved. The question comes in, what happens when these libraries are compromised? Yes, my friend, it is as scary as you can imagine. If one of these packages, which is pretty popular one, gets compromised, entirety of our code base, no matter how much security you're putting in, everything is just polluted, everything is compromised. 
This is exactly what happened with one of the packages recently, and I'm seeing a trend that these kinds of attacks are rising like exponentially. One of the pretty popular packages is UA Parser. This package is utilized quite a lot by almost everybody in the production to find out more details about your system on what operating system you are, what is the browser you are using, what version you are using, are you on Android devices, iOS, everybody uses it. Facebook, Apple, Shopify, V and all of the guys, anybody who is in the production actually uses this. Now, UA Parser is not a small package. It is pretty much insanely powerful and a popular package. 8 million weekly downloads. If this is not popular, I don't know what the f*** is. Now, in this sophisticated attack, attackers somehow got the ability to push code into the repository from the user or the publisher directly. And he smartly updated three versions of this package. Now, very smartly, the three versions that he pushed on was 0.7.29, 0.8.0, and 1.0.0. So notice here how smartly he's targeting all three parts of it, X, Y, and Z. So no matter what kind of automatic updation of this package you have allowed into your production system, all of them are gonna get compromised. Now, there was no estimated being put out that how much damage this, uh, this vulnerability or this attack has actually made, but very quickly it was patched up. It was not too long. Now, there is no official documentation or a public figure that uh, how much damage this package updation has made or anything, but very quickly the author or the founder of the package came in and says that I believe that my account was compromised, my NPM publishing account was compromised, and somebody has hijacked it and pushed these updates, and I'm releasing out another update on top of that to fix all of that. Now, after analyzing all these uh, attacks, the code that was pushed up, it was found out that there was a script, malicious script, which was running in these NPM packages, and it allowed attacker to actually steal all of the passwords which were stored in the browser, as well as there was some crypto mining script that was executing via this code. And in case you are thinking that it was not too bad, Another one of the GitHub user uh, who actually inspected all of these scripts, uh, it is not confirmed, but he actually claimed that the amount of patch that is being uh, sent up, the malicious one, on the Windows system, it actually downloads a Dana bot and just compromise it further down. It's like almost like a Trojan horse, but again, this was not verified, but this was the claim of the user. So much scary. Now, of course, in the later on version, everything was fixed and thanks to the open source that the code was open, it was analyzed and we found out all of those things. But now can you see that open source definitely is good, we were able to find it out, but since everything was open source, everybody was using this package showing that the trust that yeah, this is all good, everybody got compromised at the same time. I love open source, you love open source, and this is the entire community we all love. We use so many of the packages, we are dependent on so many of the things that we don't really bother to go in and check all of these codes, and to be honest, it's not even possible. The place we, where we are, it's so far that it's not even possible. Now, obviously, attackers are targeting more of such NPM packages, and so many of the reports are coming all around in the community that, hey, I was also being targeted because I host this kind of package, which is popular. Of course, attackers are not gonna attack for a package which gets 100, 200 downloads. That makes no sense. But imagine if this scales up to something like a core package of Angular or maybe React, how much scary it can get. Okay, so looks like I have scared you enough for today. So let, let's talk about what could be the possible solution of that. Now, yes, again, a lot of security researcher at that time came forward and have recommended that, hey, we should get rid of all these tildes and all these uh, tides, whatever we are having these uh, special privileges that, hey, just automatically patch all of these things. We should manually uh, update all these things. Yeah, that is one of the possible way, very, very fatigue way, but it is one of the way. But my point here is that this is an existing problem. This is the one thing that we are facing around. And obviously we are not gonna be solving this problem if we are not going to talk about it. So more people are gonna make videos, more people are gonna write article about it and are gonna talk openly in the community, then something we are gonna come up with. And I personally believe that NPM JS is on to such a scale now that I think there should be more of the protection mechanism that should be injected directly by the NPM and it should not be like something that, hey, community should gonna, is gonna do and come up with something. 
no, it shouldn't be like that. NPM should come forward and the people who are so much expert in these domains should come up with some of the ideas and have some talks and discussion or some conference talk about it that what can be possible solution for these uh, attacks that are coming around. And yeah, for all those people who are thinking that this was one isolated situation, no, this is not an isolated uh, situation which we came around. UA Parser just got the popularity around it that, hey, it was attacked and it was hacked. But there are so many of the other packages which are getting hacked, getting attacked and are rolling out the final good version of the patch. But they are not being talked much around. And I want they should be talked more. So in case you have enjoyed this video, go ahead, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, go follow me up on Instagram as well in case you enjoy such videos. And definitely there is a lot on this channel right from the crash courses to the series on Golang and these spicy videos and a whole bunch of other things. So you're gonna find something up here always. That's it for this video. I'm gonna surely catch you up in the next one. We've been down this road before Check for monsters by the door